I am, but this isn't easy. Mind Kill's telling me I don't deserve you, but I still... Shinsi pounces onto me, we both tumble back. Me landing on my back, she landing on top of me. I still want you. <laughs> the voice is not Hey everyone, welcome back to DDLC World of Dreams. Last time I opened this game was September 20th, and that's a mistake. We need to get this going. As we head down the street, Natsuki speaks up. So what store are we going to first? We can get everything we need at the Tally Ho in the mall. That's good. They'll definitely have what I want. Y yes and they should have all the supplies I need too. i never been to one. I'm excited to see. Tally ho, the hell? Yeah, it's a massive superstore. Don't tell me you don't have a tally ho in your reality. Yeah, we call it a Walmart. Well, if we can get everything in one go, so much the better. Tally ho to tally ho. All the girls, even Natsuki giggle on my dumb joke as we continue. Sorry takes the lead, occasionally stopping to jump into nearby puddles. She's gonna get a cold if she doesn't stop. Siri, be careful. We don't want you to slip and hurt yourself. <laughs> I'll be fine. She's such a kid sometimes. Yeah, but I like that childlike innocence about her. Makes me feel safe, secure, happy. Besides, this could help her. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, but just be careful not to get too wet. Menji's worried you'll get a cold. I see Siri blush. Okay, I've always wondered about that stereotype. Natsuki sudden interruption catches me off guard. What stereotype? I've seen in a manga a lot. Someone gets drenched in the rain because they forgot their umbrella or something the next day and they're home with a cold. What's up with that? Is that actually a thing? My dad always insists I take my umbrella when you never forecast that it's gonna rain. I, uh, um, actually might have an explanation. Really? I'm all ears. Well, to put it plainly, no, getting wet won't cause you to catch a cold in and itself. This kind of conversation is really nice. Is this what friends talk about? Just jumping from subject to subject at random, simply enjoying the fact that we're talking, exchanging ideas. Yes, now that's what friendship's about. I've heard it that too, but that stereotype is far from somewhere. Any ideas, Yuri? She nods, and her nervousness lessening. She doesn't notice that everyone's watching her now. Well, the common cold is an airborne virus, and the rain carries it to the ground. If we get wet in the rain, the chances of infection go up. Also, cold temperatures do have a tendency to weaken the human immune system, and there's more chance of rain when it's cooler. Thirdly, viruses do tend to live longer in colder weather. She looks up and notices for the first time that everyone's looking at her. Uh, I, I rambled again, didn't I? I shake my head. Come on, Yuri, there's no need to be so nervous around us. I don't know about the rest of you, but I learned something new today. Not bad. I guess your brains aren't as your boobs after all. Natsuki! Aw, but Yuri's boobs are the same as they always been. Big and beautiful. <laughs> eh, too, Sayuri. Ugh. Maybe it's just me, but it's sometimes weirdly suspicious that Sayuri knows exactly what she's doing. I wonder how smart she really is. She's what you call people smart. Sorry, you're so silly sometimes. I wrap my arm around her and give her a gentle noogie. Hey, let me go, meanie. The others giggle at this, even Yuri now. Yeah, yeah, we're both meanies. Sorry, is this the place? I look up. Welcome to Downtown Street. At the first glass, this reminds me of Akihabara. Whatever the hell that word is. That didn't take long, so where's the tally ho? Follow me. Sorry marches forward, leading us down the rainy streets. After a while, she reaches the intersection and we cross. Everyone except Sorry stops as we get a good look at the mall. From the outside, the place is massive and people are heading in and out of the mall and umbrellas all out. Damn, Sayori. You never told us the mall was this big. i never been a mall this massive before. Me too. It's a bit imposing. It'll be fine, everyone. I've never been in a mall either, so don't worry. If you all stay together, we should be able to get this done in no time. Let's go. We head towards the entrance, then make our way inside. The mall is bustling with people, which isn't surprising considering it's a Friday evening. Natsuki and Monica both look around, taking in everything. How Yuri seems to have her to shrink in place. I walk over to her. Yuri? Ah, 
a verse. Are you alright? Yeah, I'll be alright. I just need to get used to this place. I see. I take it you're not a fan of large, crowded places. She slowly shakes her head. If I'm honest, I much prefer a quiet store. Places like these, well, I get anxious. I start feeling a bit guilty now of not noticing. Of course, Yuri would be the kind to find these kinds of situations uncomfortable. I'm sorry. If I had known, I wouldn't have agreed to come here. Eh? Oh, th there's no need to apologize. I'll be alright. Everyone else walks over. You guys, is everything okay? I think so. I think Yuri's a bit just overwhelmed. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Yuri. I should have realized. N no, I'm alright, really. No need to worry, I promise. Well, if you're sure. I am. Well, if we get this done soon, the quicker we can get out of here, right? Yeah? So let's go. Sorry, where's the store? Upstairs. I'll show you. Sorry leads us to escalator and jumps on. Monok confidently strides up to the next step. Yuri hesitantly steps on as well as your Natsuki follows suit. I quickly bring up the rear. Natsuki turns back to me and scowls. You better not be looking up every our skirts. <laughs> of course not. There's not anything to look at. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I look away as we head up to the second floor. Once we reach the top, Sari begins leading us down the hallway. She certainly seemed a lot happier than before. We all walk behind in her horizontal line. I slow down and begin walking to this next step to Monica. Hey, Monica. Yes? What did you guys talk about earlier? You, Sari, and Yuri, I mean. Well, Monica, you know she's Yuri's over. Yes? Yuri, can you tell a verse in Menji what I told what Sari and I talked about earlier? Ah, oh, well, Monica said nothing but wo kind words to Sayori, telling her she would be okay that her depression was going to get the better of her. She said she should be there for her if anything happened. I wasn't aware that she had depression. She's good at hiding it. Monica, Menji, and other uh, have been doing our best to reassure her, but you know how depression gets. All we can do is just be there for her. I understand. I'll help however I can. I'm glad to hear it. Arigato. Guys, we're here. Welcome to the frozen food section. All the girls look at the entrance. Hmm, it does bit look a bit like a Walmart. Well, no one's looking to give Monica a small pat on the back. Leaning in, I whisper to her. You have earned my full trust. And she has. I could tell she was really eager to prove herself to me. She's fucking crying. Bringing a third party who she knew I could trust and was more clinched to it. She's definitely worthy of all the trust I placed in her. If you'll be guilty not trusting her before, I'll make it up to her for later. Mine too. I repeat this to Monica. Verse. Menji. Thank you so much. She wipes a tear from her eye and then walks over to where the shopping cart and grabs one. Uh, okay, everyone. Let's get started. I feel like I'm in Rustboro City. <laughs> from Pokemon to Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. This is the music, I think. It's like, buy something, will ya? Sorry, uh, sorry, Menji. Since you know this two know the store, why don't you lead us to the spots where we need to go? I walk over and grab the cart. I'll take care of this. She blushes at me and I feel myself do the same. She never really had any blushing sprites in the game, so seeing her like this makes the absolute cutest girl all I've ever seen. <laughs> Let's go. Tally Ho is a pretty massive store, especially for a Japanese store. It's pretty busy too. Alright then, where should we start? We can leave the dinner stuff for last. Sorry, you point to the back. I think that's where the printer stuff is. Wow, that's fancy. I like the little cat ones right there. We head over and we head over there and grab the supplies that Sorry, Monica, and Yuri had on their lists. When we're done, Yuri asks about the section where the oil diffusers might be. What for? For some aromatherapy. Eh? What's that? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection, it's almost like magic. Magic, bitch! <laughs> hmm. That doesn't sound exactly tell me what it is, it just tells me you like it. It's a type of therapy. The way I understand it, it's certain aromas can lick certain responses in the body. Like jasmine oil, for example. It can... Oh, what can it do? It's like an aphrodisiac and an antidepressant. I give Sari a brief look. She catches my eye, but then looks away immediately. 
I decide to make someone laugh at least. I think it helps with leaving menopause symptoms. <laughs> That's bad, dude. <laughs> huh? I don't get it. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, bad joke, I know. Do you know if they have any oils here? I'm sure they do, but I'm not sure where. Well, then why don't we look for some? <clears throat> we all begin looking up and down the aisles. <laughs> that fucking nose, dude. At one point, Monica asked someone in the Talia uniform and were directed to another aisle. As soon as we reach it, Yuri walks quickly ahead of us. Whoa, whoa, whoa slow down for and wait for us. Yuri's in our own little world as she reaches the diffusers, looking them over carefully. I look over the oil choices themselves. Sarah and Monica are both next to me, browsing. I see an evergreen colored bottle and pick it up. Winter Alpine, huh? For those nights when you crave the scent of a fresh wintry forest. Hey, that's cool. Hey, Yuri, check this one out. Eh? She walks over a couple diffusers in her hand. Winter Alpine. Intriguing. What does it smell like? I unscrew the lid and waft the scent towards me. It smells like a Christmas tree. I like this. Let's get it too. I nod and place on the card, smiling at Yuri. He blushes a bit before returning to look at the diffusers. I look over at Monica, noticing a fleeting look of jealousy on her face. Our eyes meet. She looks away. Monica, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying. I really am. I know you are. Put a come for a hand on her shoulder. Come on, let's keep going. Once Yuri finishes, we have the confections out. Nats keep practically dragging it along. She stuffs cards with all sorts of supplies. Just in case Sayori or Menji don't have what I want. Finally, it's my turn. Oh, jeez, they're all staring at me. I'm so, so self conscious. I gulp and head in the normal grocery aisle. What are we having for dinner? Sayori's almost ready to bounce off the walls. Something simple like pasta, remember? Oh, well, right. I can't wait. Hmm. Menji, are there any restaurants right here that's decent sit down places? I can think of a few. Ooh, a great group date idea, eh? I think my wallet can afford that. If we ever manage to separate, I'll try to pay you back somehow. Don't worry about it. If we succeed, my empty wallet will be a small price to pay for us escaping that nightmare I saw in the game. This Sunday, I'm gonna take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate. Eh? You're gonna treat us then, too? Yes, I am. All the girls look excited as we head down the aisle. As we walk, I notice Monica pulls Sayori aside to talk to her. Can't help but over here. Hey, Sayori. What is it? It's, well, um, about your dream. Oh, what about it? Well, it's just... <laughs> you know what? Never mind. It's not as important as I thought it was. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sorry I asked. Well, if you're sure... Hey, Monica? Yes? What kind of food do you like? Well, I'm a vegetarian, so I like those kinds of things. Hey, <laughs> so that's an averse mention. You mentioned veggie pasta. What's your favorite meal, though? And do on they talk. And I seem to turn out to keep talking as well. I'm telling you, there's some manga out there that you enjoy if you just give it the chance. It's not like I don't believe you, but I'm just not a manga reader. And why judge it? I'm not judging, it just doesn't appeal to me. For me, seeing the action on the page... Oh, fuck me. For, for me, seeing an action on the page takes away from the experience of imagining it yourself. If you see one rendition, it takes away from enjoyment, for me at least. Uh, that's not to say I can't see the appeal of manga, but just not for me. That's not all that manga's about, though. Oh, then what is it about? Manga can tell stories just as well as any novel can. Yeah, okay, you won't be able to imagine the places and people, but the stories are just as cool. Listen, it's just obvious you've never really given it a chance. You can just admit it without trying it at first. Why not have just a little test, then? A test? Yeah, I say we both do something we're not used to. You pick out a novel for me to read, and I'll find a manga that you can read. Then we're both done, and we can discuss it. Uh, well, I suppose that's not a bad idea. Sure, then when you do that? After the festival. I chuckle softly. <laughs> Sounds like those two are getting along pretty well. Better than before. Isn't it great? It is. Finally, I finished shopping and we the checkout line. As we approach the register, a familiar face for finishing running up another customer. So he rushes past me as soon as he sees the newcomer. Oh, it's... Co oh, it's Konoha again. Koka, hi! Sayori? Uh, Sayori? Hello there! Fancy running into you here. 
And Menji too. A pleasure to see you again. Same to you. I didn't know you worked here too. Uh, well, I used to work here. But when I left, I told the manager that I worked shifts that he couldn't find people to cover. Whoa, that's so cool. Thanks. Konigo looks past the two of us and looks at the other girls curiously. Who are your friends? These are the other members of the Litcher Club. Coco, meet Asuno Monica, Yoshika Yuri, and Miramoto Natsuki. That's a cute photo, look at that. Konata curtsies in a very polite manner. Greetings to all of you. I'm Chiba Konaha. Kotoha, yeah, whatever. Whoa, are you from that rich family? Kona lowers her voice. Actually, I would appreciate it if you didn't mention my family when name in public, please. It's a bit embarrassing. Uh, sure, I guess. Thank you. I appreciate your discretion. You may call me Kotoha if you want. It is an honor to meet you, Kotoha. Koto Noah. Ko fuck me. Same to you, Yoshikara san. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Kotoha. Koto Noah. You can call me Monica. A pleasure to meet you, Monica. I've heard good things about you. Your parents must be proud. I'm turning Russian. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, as proud as any parent. I can tell this is an uncomfortable topic for Monica, but I also can't blame Koto, Hana. Koto Noah. She doesn't know. Fortunately, Sari comes to the rescue. Monica's the best. She's a great leader and so smart. Agreed. Monica's quite an accomplished student and club president. Damn right she is. I've seen some tears form in Monica's eyes and the praise heaped on her by the others. I can't imagine how it must be to hear encouragement from the others when she's been through what she has. I couldn't have been put it better myself, you guys. Oh, that's high praise from you all. That's how uh, all of you, whatever my English. I'm glad to hear it. Then she looks at her card. Oh my, what's all this for? It's for our club's part in the festival. We're going to spend our weekend preparing for it. What will your club be doing for the festival? Poetry recit... Re wow, that's... Po poetry recitation and performance. Really? Now that sounds intriguing. I would wonder if I should grace the literature club with my presence. You really should. It's going to be so much fun. If you can, I would love to have you drop by. Oh, perhaps I will. But why are you buying so much? We're planning on providing people who come with some refreshments and appropriate atmosphere for recitation. Is that so? That sounds absolutely marvelous. Your vocabulary is really fluent. Jesus. Consider me properly intrigued. Now I will really stop by. Here, let me start ringing you up. With that, we begin putting our items on the counter and she begins ringing us up. After a bit, Natsuki looks up at the total on the screen and turns to me. Hey, I realized. How are we gonna pay for all this? I look up at the two little two and watch it go rapidly up and Hana scans an item. You know, if I've been explaining this to your mom, she's gonna be a stack to me new friends and she'll pay you back. Hey! <laughs> Sorry about that. Menji's got more than enough and he's got me permission to use it. I don't think that's very fair to you, Menji. Monica pulls out some cash and hands it to me. It's alright, really. Menji, this isn't alright. I feel like we're taking advantage of you. I wish I could pay you back, too. I can't hear what Menji's saying, but it sounds like he's being a stubborn dummy. Jeez. The other girls start reaching their purses, but Kona clears her throat. No, 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 no. Allow me, please. Kona pulls out a credit card. Whoa! Swiping it quickly before I can eject. Wow. Well, uh, th that takes care of that problem, I guess. Yeah. Are you absolutely sure about all this? But of course, Sire is my friend, and you and her friends are my friends. And if there's one thing I enjoy, it's helping my friends. Wow, uh, I don't know how to thank you. Hmm, well, how about you wow me at the poetry performance on Monday? <laughs> it's a deal. Kotana begins bagging items up, humming something that sounds like a waltz. Eventually she finishes. It was nice to meet you all. I shall see you at school on Monday. Good luck on your festival preparations. See you later, Coco. The other club members say their goodbyes and we exit the store. I feel like we see her fucking everywhere. It was the cafe, 
the library, and now the mall. She works a lot. As we head out to the mall, Natsuki walks over to Sayori. Hey, how do you know her, Sayori? Oh, she was in my class last year. I didn't know you were friends with the richest girl in town. You want to get in the good with the rich crowd, eh? No, that's not true at all. Relax, Sayori, she's just teasing you. Oh, okay. She seems like quite a kind person. She is, and she's talented too. Mata comes to me and lowers her voice to a whisper. She looks jealous again. How does she know you? Uh, I've seen her work at the cafe and bookstore earlier this week. She was also in my art class yesterday. I see. I wonder why she's working though, if she's so rich. I don't know. I look up at the skylight and notice her rainfall's gotten heavier. Something on your mind? We should head back quickly. Monica looks up. Whoa. Agreed. Okay, everyone. We should hurry. Hey, did you hear about what happened to Ye? No, what happened? I heard she's about to get expelled. She was suspended, obviously, but someone in her class earlier today, she was about to be kicked out. About time, too. I shrug. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. We head downstairs to the escalator, making our way towards the exit. We walk towards the exit. Whoa, what was that? I'll look up. Oh, dear. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Sounds like I'm playing a horror game. Yeah, you're right. We should try and hurry back as soon as we can. It sounds like the storm's about to get worse. Ah, uh, right. Uh, everyone, try and keep... Uh, everyone, try and keep all underneath the umbrellas if you can help. Monica? Menji? Is that you? Oh, who's that now? Oh, it's, uh... Mori. Oh, wow, her name is on the screen. I'm a fucking moron. <laughs> I turn to see Mori standing just behind us near the entrance to the mall. It is you guys! And I'm guessing these are the three girls in the literature club, too. First we went to Kotoha, Kotonoha, and now Mori. I wonder what she's doing here. Look at the bag she's got. Probably some light shopping. No, wait, see the logo on the bag? Yeah. That's McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's logo. Oh, yeah, so it is. Of course, it's the McDonald's here. Look at that cute image, too. Who's this now? Oh, sorry everyone, this is Fujiwara Mori, the class rep for 3A. Mori, let me introduce Fujika Sayori, Miramoto Natsuki, Yoshika Yuri, and the other three members of the Literature Club. Mori smiles and bows. It's nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Yeah, nice to meet you too, I guess. <laughs> nice to see you again, uh, Fujiwara, I, I, I mean Mori. What are you doing all I what are you all doing out of here? We just got some things for our part in the festival. We've got to use our weekend to prepare. How about you? What are you doing out? <laughs> well, my parents are gonna be staying at work late, so I decided to cheat a bit and get some fast food. She holds up the bag with a sheepish grin. She knows this is all we're carrying. Hey, that looks like a lot to carry. Can I help so carry some of those bags? I don't have anywhere to be right now. I look at my Annika, she looks a bit unsure. We give her a solid nod. Actually, that'd be very nice. We'd love some help if we don't mind. Monori smiles and grabs some bags. Lead on! We head outside and after opening umbrellas begin heading down the street. The rain has picked up since we came in. Sorry, apparently eager to meet new people walks up to Mori. You wear your blazer unbuttoned too? Yeah, I do. It's a lot easier on... Well... <laughs> it's nice to meet a fellow unblazoned like me. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who used that word. You use it too? Yep. Awesome! Those two are certainly hitting off quite nicely. Yeah, they are. So who's that girl of hers? Ah, uh, yes. I am admit, I'm curious too. Well, I feel like they're ganging up on me here. First off, please try not to use my real name in public. Yeah, yeah, sorry. But how does she know Menji? Well, like I said, she's the class rep for Menji's class. She's also the president and vice president of the art club. Well, damn, that's pretty badass of her. I've seen her before. Really? Yeah, she's in the top 20 scoring students in our grade. I believe she started in the art club sometime last year. She's also pretty athletic, if I remember correctly. We've had PE together sometimes. She's quite fast and strong. I've never had PE with her. Now I'm curious to see her in action. Getting a little competitive, are we? What? K 
Can't I be curious now? Curious about what? <laughs> oh, Monica just curious to see who would win in a race. Oh, that sounds like fun. I love to try racing with you. That's okay. That sounds perfect. Sometime after the festival, then. Sounds good to me. Mori looks around the street. Pretty awesome neighborhood you guys have here. Looks nice and quiet. It sure is. There's even a park nearby. Really? I have to visit here, then. My house is actually six blocks away from this one if I counted right. Mori pulls out her phone. Give me a minute. Let's see. Aha! Yep, I'm actually a short walk away from here. That's cool. By the way, how long have y'all lived here? Oh, only sorry that I live here. Oh, sorry. Where do y'all live? I actually live in a smaller place with my dad about 20 minutes from school. I live in a small apartment about half a hour away from school. About an hour away from school? Okay, wow. Monica? Uh, sorry, I was lost in thought. Well, right now I'm staying at a friend's house for a while. It's not too far from here. Really, how come? Uh, that's a bit, um... Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to ask something so personal. It's, it's alright, you didn't know. What's more important is that I have a place to sleep. Well, that's good. We reached Sayuri's house. Here we are, Fujiwara-san. Thanks for your help. No problem. And on call me Mori, everyone. She puts the bags down inside the front door. I love to stay in help, but I should actually get back to my club plan for the festival. Oh yeah, what's your club doing? We're set up an art gallery where all our members tried their best to recreate famous art pieces. We'll be sure to stop by. Please do, I'll be stopping by yours too. What are you doing, by the way? We're gonna be reciting poems. Really? Now what's all the stuff here? Atmosphere. <laughs> Dialogue skipping. Whoa. That's impressive. I'm definitely gonna stop by. I can't wait to see that. Well, I'll leave you to it. See you all on Monday. See you then. The confident bundle of joy heads back the way we come. Well, let's get shitted. Let's get shitted, boys. Okay, everyone. Let's get everything set up for our tonight's activities. We won't be in the edge tonight. Just printer, paper, and staplers. Sorry, let's go to start the design. I'll start putting dinner. Now, without me, you're not. You're not going to be working in the kitchen without my help. You need someone to make sure you don't burn the water. Damn, that you suck at cooking and you just burn the water. She snickers to herself. Huh. wonder how she found about that. Maybe Sayuri told her. Wait, what about the pamphlets? Well, Sayuri and I need to f design them first. I don't see anything wrong with Natsuki helping you. Besides, you're still injured. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I'll help in here until you and Sayuri are ready. Sounds good. W w what should I do? Hmm. Let me get a head start on your part of the festival. Maybe start some designs. When we're ready for help assembling the pamphlets, we'll let you know. Yeah, I can do that. I can already see Yuri's mind churning. She pulls out a blank sheet of paper and grabs another pencil before she begins drawing. Natsuki and I head to the Sayuri's kitchen and begin to f take the food out of the bags. Hey, uh, question. Yeah, what's the good? Who exactly is that Mori chick? And I think she understand. She, uh, she wants to know the, what the relationship between us is. Like I said, she's the class rep from Menji's class and the president of the art, pres, president and vice president of Soccer Academy's art club. I pull out the pamphlets of dry pasta and place them on the counter. But get this, she's interested in leaving it and joining the literature club. For real? How come? Not so against filling the pie ends with water. She said something about how her club has become too political. Kind of like how Monica fell in the debate club last year. Well, I can understand that. Club politics sounds like it sucks. Not like any of my experience with that. Well, the literature club is small right now. Hopefully the club won't ever get too bogged down in politics. But as long as you have four key members of a club, it'll be a fun place of fun and relaxation. Bigger is it always better when it comes to clubs. Interesting. Well, all I want to do is read my manga, but Monica keeps coming up with activities for us to do. Reading a novel and talking about poems and all that stuff. And I don't understand literature, but must study all of its aspects. Yes, Minji and I both know manga literature, but I think that Monica really wants to have fun in this club too. She's trying to include everyone in the club activities the best way she can. That's a good sign of a good leader. I'm not saying she's a bad leader, but I wish she just wouldn't discuss, dismiss manga so lightly. Wait, she does? 
when? That's right, remember what you said on Wednesday? Something along the lines of Monsuke is a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga in the club room. Oh yeah, that kind of sounds like she doesn't like manga. I don't think she dislikes manga. She's got her own taste just like you, but I'm not sure she's ever read manga before to be honest. Natsuki angrily snaps some pasta in half before placing it in a bowl. Seriously, what's wrong with manga? They're all just as good as novels. Absolutely nothing's wrong with them. They've got their own merits, but so do novels. You guys read Sensitivity recently. Tell the truth, you liked it a bit. If you didn't, you won't have got so heated about Edward keeping his engagement secret from Eleanor. Secrets like that should be told. Although it is, to be honest, it was hard to read. You kept going on, so I kind of turned her out. But... She looks at the door to where Yuri is still focused on her paper. Don't tell Yuri, but I didn't like the dislike the book. <laughs> Glad to hear you enjoyed it. I didn't say that, I said I didn't dislike it. Dumbass. Okay, okay, you win. She stirs the water in one of the pots. Speaking of manga, I noticed you've been reading Parfait Girls. When did you become a fan? This past Tuesday, actually. Man and I both started reading when we were sick. How far along are you? We just got to the part where they're introducing the guy. Makoto? Is that his name? I haven't read that part yet. Looks kind of generic to me, like all anime harem protagonists. You know, spiky brown hair, that. Oh my god, that's literally my look. K kind eyes, the works. He does, doesn't he? N not that I've read a harem manga or anything. Alright, alright. Well, how are you liking it so far? So far, it's alright. It's got a slice of life feeling to it. Take a small taste of the sauce. Hmm. Needs a bit more salt, I think. Put a few pinches in. Don't let the first volumes fool you. It gets better soon, trust me. Oh yeah, I can't wait to read everything then. I began preparing the ingredients for the meatballs. Haha, <laughs> I can do that. Just watch the stove stove watcher. I raise an eyebrow. Are you sure about that? This was gonna be my if you want my dinner to be ama if you want uh you want dinner to be amazing, you should watch a pro at work. Besides, wanna know I'm gonna make meatballs better than anyone. All right, all right, you win. I smile and go back to swatching and stirring the pots. She's good with the balls. <laughs> good job, Cole. Soon they boil and I place the pasta in, stirring constantly. After the little while, I try to continue the conversation. Oi, Natsuki. Hmm? I'm curious. How'd you get into manga? Whoa. Not too good to. Yeah. Shit. -a. Sorry, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, it's okay. I got in there because of, because of my mom. Oh, really? Your mom, mom's manga fan too. She was more than that. She was a mangaka. Actually, she wrote Parfait Girls. My jaw drops in astonishment. I almost paused. Menji would have done the same. No way. She did? I rushed out to the living room, grab the first two volumes of Part Figures and open the front page. Let's see. Miramata's author name. Muran. Muramoto! Wow, that's amazing. Your mom's an amazing mangaka. I placed the manga on the counter. As he puts with the volume, opens, and it opens it absent mindedly, flipping the pages almost reverently. She was. Yeah. She places the volume down on the counter near the window and looks at the wet garden. I take the hint and my demeanor falters a bit. I have my suspicion mom, Nakasi's mom passed away, but I wasn't entirely sure. Until now. Was, uh, oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. She holds up her hand. Stop, don't say it. It's not your fault. You didn't know. That explains her love for manga. I never have imagined. Natsuki, is it? Is it okay if I ask a question? Not to wax over the oven, turns it on to preheat it. Go ahead. You copy Parfait Girls. In the club room. Is it special in some way? Yeah. They're all the copies my mom got from the publishers before they send the manga out to the stores. Parfait Girls was our only solo manga before she was an assistant. Mangaka normally started as assistant artist to more senior mangaka, helping them with their manga. Oh, got it. Thanks. She was an amazing artist. And the story so far is pretty cool. She was amazing. I'm gonna be just become just as good as her. You're gonna become a mangaka too. That's great, Todesio! I never in my life imagined that Natsuki would become a manga artist. 
I always imagined her wanting to be a baker or something like that. Guess I haven't should assume anything about that. I actually got some drawings I did in class earlier. Want to see? Sure, I love to. Be right back. I feel Menji getting excited as I am. I'm grinning like an idiot as Natsuki goes to get her bag. Soon I hear Natsuki's cute pitter patter footsteps returning. Feast your eyes! She hands me a notebook that's open to pages. I take a look. It's a drawing of a shrine priestess of all things. The girl is holding what looks like an in incense lantern in one hand and a staff in the other. She's holding a staff forward, the tip is glowing as she's using some kind of magic! Her expression is pretty serious when her clothes and long black hair are flowing in the wind. It's actually pretty good. Not as good as the one for parfait girls, but the style is very similar. Whoa. This is impressive. How long have you been drawing? I hand her back her notebook. She takes the puzzle back in her bag. Ever since I was a kid. My mom taught me. After, well, she passed away, I taught myself. I watch tutorials online whenever I get access to a computer and practice whenever I can. She goes back to rolling meatballs and placing them on a baking tray. Your mom certainly taught you well. I have no doubt you'll become a great monica someday. Well, of course, I've become the greatest monica in Japan. No, the world, the world! I dropped my mouse. No doubt in my mind. Now then, let's get these meatballs in the oven. She walks over to the oven and looks inside. <laughs> Not quite hot enough, but it'll be fine. She slides a tray in. If Manga calls us away before they're done, just keep an eye on them. You want them to be a nice medium brown. She should start searching through the kitchen drawers. I want you to keep the... Aha! She pulls out a small thermometer and hands it to me. If you're not sure, just use this to make sure they're around 74 degrees Celsius. Alright, sounds good. I put the thermometer on the counter. Hey, what kind of manga would you like to write? Huh. She leans against the wall and looks out the window again. Shoujo manga, I think. Hell, maybe I write a slice of the one about an hour after school literature club. I've got the perfect name for that. Shit, I said that without thinking. I hope she didn't hear that. Oh, you do? Of course, my luck isn't that good. Let's hear it. You think it's a good idea to tell her the name? I know you're thinking of. Yeah, probably not a very good idea. Let's see if we'll this is a waiter. Now I think about it, the name I think would be better from some kind of dating sim. Please God tell me that worked. Give me the name anyway, come on! Uh, of course it didn't work. I, have, I forget that she'd be persistent sometimes. Well, I... <laughs> okay, everyone. Sorry if I finished our first draft. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Saved by the Monica. No kidding. Go ahead and go. I'll watch. Keep watch over the food here. Huh. Fine, but if you burn anything, I'll burn you. Got it? Yowch. Okay, I'll be careful. Natsuki leaves, and I breathe a small sigh of relief. That was way too close. It was. I need to try and think before I speak sometimes. I start the pots again. But then Monica wouldn't love you the same. Once more, she's going to get cheeky about warm. It's still something I should change. Um, a verse. Menji, am I interrupting? I turn to see you're peeking from the door. Not at all. Do you need me for something? I just came in to make some tea for everyone since our last pot is cold. Of course. Do you need me to move anything around? I moved to make space around the counter. No, no, no. It's okay. I just need some water. She goes and grabs the water boiler and begins filling it with water. I'm about to keep an eye on dinner. The two of us don't talk for a bit. After a while, I'll take a look where you're standing. Look at the hypocrite. I'm kidding. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Never in a million years I'd expect to see Yuri pick up a manga. I should get out of the habit of assuming. What's she doing? Early she said she didn't read manga, right? Your guess is as good as mine. Yuri opens the manga and looks at the title page. Her expression is somewhat similar to how like what she was reading a novel, just not as intense. I go back to watching dinner, occasionally looking over at her. This is so out of character for her. I'm a bit worried. If you're that worried, why not ask her? Yeah, she probably should. Uh, Yuri. Eh? Ah! She jumps in astonishment, drops the manga, falls to the floor, and lands on the pages. I'm so sorry. She picks up and tries cleaning it. Oh, no. She's looking at one of the pages, terror plaster on her face. What's wrong? One of the pages, do. So they take the manga from her and look at it. Across from the middle page is a large crease where the page had folded over. Hey, it's okay, really. But I ruined your manga. I should pay for it. Hold on. Wait. I reach out as she cries and move past her. You grab her wrist. Calm down, okay. She takes a few deep breaths. Give her a bit to calm down. Feeling better? She nods and looks at it on her wrist. 
Looking down at myself, I see her instead of holding it. Wait, her wrist. Damn it! I really said gently. Sorry about that. I it's okay. She holds her wrist close, her face a bit flushed. I was holding her too tightly. Don't blame yourself. Her wrist, though. What about... Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. At that moment, the hot wire begins to boil. Looking relieved for the distraction, Yuri heads past me to begin preparing the tea. Put the manga on the counter again and go back to keep an eye on the food. I wait until she doesn't look busy before I track Tarek and Yuri again. Yuri? Y yes? Don't be nervous, I was just wondering why I read in Parfait Girls. Well, earlier when you said Natsuki when I talk, talking, I can uh, overhear a few things. She acts over and picks it up. I didn't know it was so personal to her. Me neither. Come to think of it, that explains how upset she gets in the original game when a copy gets a crease in it. I have to admit, from what I've read so far, the author really does have a good job of setting the stage for future developments. It's very... What's the phrase again used again? Slice of life. But I can sense that the story's building up as some kind of reveal. That's what's impressive. <coughs> Even though you only read the first volume. <coughs> um. Indeed, the way where some panels are drawn to be quite telling. The author really thought with this through. Even I didn't get that, and I love manga. Well, I do. Not to not to read manga as early as you do, but... It's probably natural that you miss something on your eyes or be controlled by someone else. Natsuki's mother was a great author. I wonder what a novel by her would be like. She actually tried that once. Natsuki comes and walks past me and opens the oven to check on the meatballs. These are ready. She turns back to Yuri. Actually... She tried writing a right novel, but she didn't enjoy it much as manga. Natsuki, I didn't know. I'm so... Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> I love that quote. It's fine, really. I don't want you feeling it bad, Ed. Or sorry for me. Don't think you have to read this because you feel guilty or anything. Aye, but I'm a bit intrigued by the story. I think... I would like to read this for our test. You would? Really? You, ma'am, have at most made a most excellent choice in literature. And to make it equally fair, I think I'm read that horror novel you've been reading lately. Gary puts down the manga and grabs a teapot and cups. I'll bring a spare copy for you as soon as I can. I stand there but a stun before going back to stirring the meatballs into the sauce. That was certainly an unusual turn of events. Your world feels so much more real than before. You've all got names, last names, families, backstories befitting a full life and the interaction between Yuri and Natsuki. It's like they're growing more as people. I keep forgetting that you're all still teenagers. Yeah, teens with issues. I know, all teens have some kind of issues, but these girls have some major ones, and let's not forget ours. How can I? We keep merging. Averse, Menji. Monica walks in softly and lowers her voice. What happened in here? Yuri and Natsuki are walking out talking and laughing. I'm not complaining or anything, but I'm just wondering what had changed. Grandma poor figure as I heard up and showed it to her. Natsuki's mom wrote this. Oh, wow. Natsuki's mom was... I didn't know that. No one did. I began setting things up for Monica and my dinner's next. It does somewhat explain for a lover manga, although let's be honest, manga is very enjoyable. Believe it. I wouldn't know. I never read a manga, if I'm honest. The closest I've ever come to attempting to read one is I try to get the others to just a group activities for a change. But Natsuki didn't want to do what Yuri wanted, and Yuri didn't want to do what Natsuki wanted. I remember not, so Yuri told me about that. Yeah. Hey, do you mind if I read it? I like the first manga I want to be special with my friends. I don't mind. She smiles and sniffs the air. It does smell good. Thank Natsuki for that. She really knows her way around a kitchen. She's good at baking, but I know she could cook too. Although I do remember coming in one day with a bento she made was... Odd. Oh, maybe she's not the best chef, but amazing baker? I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, at any rate, the main pasta goes done. I'm gonna make ours next. You really don't need to do that. I don't want you feeling left out. But you haven't. She walks in and gently takes a hold of my arm. I haven't felt so included in my whole life, fabricated life. All my life I've been treated by my classmates as a school idol. Something unattainable. You saw what the other game version of the MC thought of me. You've never treated me like that. Neither have the others. I've never felt so cared for before. I put my hand over hers. Everyone deserves to feel loved. 
A chuckle. Could you grab that third plate for me? I don't trust myself to carry three plates, especially with this wobbly body. Who calling you? Who you call wobbly? Did I say that? Just wait till we say we separate. I'll show you wobbly. Scary. I laugh along with Monica after I explain what he said. Well, let's go back out there. Okay. Monica and I head out to the living room. The other girls are busy clearing the table off. What it up? Monica and I place the plates down on the table. I decided to be a goofball again. Our spaghetti is special. Would you lovely mademoiselles perchance care for something to something to do? Oh my god. That is some broken Italian. You're the first to laugh. The other three join soon after. Oh, you want to see her? See if I'll put splat at. Bien, mademoiselle. And back to the kitchen, pull out some juice I bought for everyone. So there's monkeys with glasses on the shelf above the oven. Danke schön. I open the doors and look in. Hmm, oh, perfect. I actually reach back, grab five wine glasses on them, and I place an open bottle of juice. Hey, does anyone want ice? None for me, thanks. I'm fine. I'm alright, thanks for asking. I'm good too. I grab fourth and fifth and put the veggie pair of ice on both. I bring out both plates and place them on the table. Someone has already found a fifth chair and place it at the head of the table size, Monica Sarri. I go back and grab the glass put on my tray. I pour the juice in each wine glass. Classy man, ain't ya? Oh, I'm the epitome of class, my man. Sure you are. I'm the classiest. I'm a man of culture. <laughs> Hell yeah. Anime culture. It's still culture. With Benji snickering in my head, I sign back out. When I walk up to the table, the girls are watching me expectantly. I decided to make a small joke. Put in one. Like some wine. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that reaction from Yuri. Or from any of them. Not how I was expecting them to react. Oh, I love that thing. I love those images. Agreed. Monica, did you tell him? No, I didn't. I swear. Huh, tell me what? I'm so confused. Uh, it's nothing. For forget about it. Well, it must be something personal I actually made her remember. Uh, sure, already forgotten. I sit down. Are, are we all ready? All the girls nod. Then, I did Akimasu. We all started eating. After I swallowed the first bit of food, I realized that Sari's mom isn't here yet. Hey, Sari. Hmm? Where's your mom? She said she had to work late tonight. Something about a deadline. All oh, makes sense. Speaking of deadlines, what the pamphlets look like? Monica gets up and hits the counter and so the paper is. She grabs one and brings it back. Here, have a look. What the f- <laughs> Look at that stock image! I'm kidding. <laughs> Soccer Academy's Literature Club invites you. October 30th, 2017, Room 3D. You will get to see our members performing their own poems and your listening pleasure. Refreshments will be provided by the club. As an added bonus, you will perform a form, you are free to do so. Please come, sincerely, the Literature Club. Hmm, pretty good, bright and cheery. Turn the page. To oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Our members are eager to share their own personal poems. Here's a list of what they're performing. Member Chizumenji, TBA. Senior member Matsuki, Jump. Senior member Yoshika Yuri. Uh, after image of a Crimson Eye, Vice President, My Meadow. Uh, for the way they fly. I turn the page. To be announced for Menji. Sorry for not including your choice. No, that's okay. This works. I'll work the pamphlet and then we get eating. You know, I'm really looking forward to hearing how you perform these. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We're looking forward to hearing from you too. <laughs> Thanks. I smile and go back to eating. After a few seconds, Menji speaks up. Is it just me or something? Been eating at Sayori since we started eating. I look over Sayori. I'm not sure I like that. Maybe you're right. Why don't we talk to her about it after dinner? I was gonna say that, yeah. So how many flyers have we made so far? Right now we made two thirds of what I think we good. I expect a couple hundred at least. Someone's optimistic. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being optimistic, right, Sayuri? Yeah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna set so many new members. Sorry, swallow your food before you speak. Uh, yes, sorry. We're gonna do great on Monday. Yes, we are. Hey, Monica, I got an idea. What idea? It just occurred to me. What if we treat new members where we get some kind of welcome meal or something? That think kind of be an interesting idea. I don't know. That seems a bit extravagant. And what if we get a ton of members? I mean, one or two would be able to do that, but what if we get much more? Yeah, you got a point. 
Still, we should welcome any new members with some kind of refreshments. Some kind of welcome party, maybe? With more cupcakes! You just want an excuse to stuff your face more, don't ya? Maybe. Maybe I could prepare something, too? Really? Like what? Well, I do a bit cooking here and there. I can make something small. That's not sweet. Not that cupcakes are bad or anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yours a cook? Where'd that come from? I don't know. I look over Monica's in a quick knowing glance. I wonder if she knows something I don't. i ask her later. What do you have in mind, it to Yuri? Yeah, maybe some... Maybe she goes silent. Like mine apparently racing. I can almost see the steam coming from her ears. Hey, it's okay. Why don't you take the time to think about it? This is still just an idea after all, but any contribution from you will be welcome. Who knew you could cook, Brewmaster Yuri? Brewmaster? Truly a master of her craft. I stand hold on my hands majestically. Here's some hoping we're gonna get my reference I'm about to unleash. We oh for the reference. We have stumbled across the most powerful person in the world! The Mithril Brewmaster of Tea! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, Nats gonna get it. She's a lady of culture. For you see, long ago, this brewmaster was born on the fiery seas of Matcha, on the grand island of Chamomilde itself. I love along with Natsuki. A lady of culture. I am impressed. As you should be. What are you both talking about? It sounds like you're quoting something. <laughs> it's your most famous anime of bridge series. But let's get back to the I know exactly what's happening. Oh my god. <laughs> I have to, I can't do the Kirito voice, man. <laughs> like I have to go with a very nasally voice. Uh yes. How good are you making small horse devoters? I can manage them. I've done some deviled eggs before. And a few other things. We'll take some time to think about it. Don't have to do anything for a while anyway. Okay. Speaking of food, this pasta is pretty good. I look over to see that Sari's finished her plate. Pasta is pretty hard to screw up if you're careful. Agreed. Well, thank you for the food. I am stuffed. Yuri finishes and dabs her mouth on a napkin. That was quite good. Yes. First, Natsuki. Danke schön. Arigato gozaimashita. Monica finishes her as well. Yes. Thanks, you two. What's this fucking smile? That smile seems to have hints of jealousy in it, but it doesn't seem as intense as before. You're all welcome. Thanks, I guess. Looking at Natsuki's plate, I'm surprised it's nearly half of what it served is still there. If he's being careful, I'll give her a smaller portion, too. Natsuki, that I gave you too much. Natsuki looks at her plate and her face goes red. I, uh, well... Monica leaves over those her voice to a whisper. She has a hard time leaving out too much of food. Oh, sorry. I held back at Natsuki. Would you like to take the rest home for later? I got some plastic containers for you. Hold on. So she heads into the kitchen. Hey, go with her. How come? She's liable to make a mess in there looking. Oh, yeah. Please don't bother. It's fine, really. It's no bother. I'll be right back. I grab Natsuki's plate. I go in the kitchen, freeze where I see half a series buried in a lower cupboard. All around her place, plastic containers and lizards scattered around. How did you get this messy in here for only a few seconds? So he moves back at the cupboard, smiling sheepishly. <laughs> Sorry, Averse. It's fine. I kneel to the beside her and clean, clean it up. Wait, we're far enough away from the others. Maybe I could talk to Sayuri. Averse? Something wrong? No, 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 right now. Oh, no, it's fine. Let's see what this food pack for Natsuki. Alright. I grab one of the bigger containers, put some pasta in, and sauce in it. After I'm sorry, I reckon I as a cup we head back into the living room. Put the containers in that next key. Here you are. You didn't have to give me extra, you know. I made plenty extra, and besides, if I let her, sorry, probably eat everything you had before the night was over. Hey, asshole. I all the girls laugh at this, too. Soon sorry joins it in. In it. I got all the empty plates and take it to the kitchen. After rinsing them off, I go back to the living room for a bit. So, are we all in agreement about this? These poems are the ones we're going to be performing. I'm alright with that. I guess that sounds good. Yuri nods in agreement. Well, alright then. And you have a poem for me soon, right? A verse? You bet your ass I will. Good. Uh, 
Now, we're two-thirds of the way down with the flyers, and if we keep going, we can finish before it gets too dark. Uh, actually, I need to get home soon. Really? But don't you live alone? Why would you need to go? So, wait, she doesn't live alone? I'm not sure. She doesn't make sense, and she'd be living with someone if she was so freely offer a place for Monica to stay. Maybe she would just be begging Monica would say no. But maybe you could see Yuri doing that. Before I came here, no, but I should really put all my preconceived notions about all these people in this world away. You're not just cupboard cutouts. Not anymore. So what are you going to do? Yuri. Uh, yes? Didn't your parents give you certain stipulations for living alone before they moved? Ah, uh, yes, as long as they're paying the bills and give me allowance, they can, they can be out and start to certain time. I'll catch up. Speaking of which, I'm sure I should get going too at some point. I could stay and help for another hour at least. That's plenty of time. Yuri, if you want to go, you can go, you can. Thank you, Monica, and, uh, I'm sorry. It's fine, I understand. Oh, and Monica? Yes? What time are we going to meet tomorrow, and where? Hmm, is 10 in the morning too early for you? I know you said you're an hour away. I'm used to getting up early. 10 is perfect. I'll be there. As for the, as for the where, Menji? Yes, uh, is it okay if we use your house tomorrow? Yeah, you can come over. My parents are probably going to be gone all weekend to visit my sister. I beat this to Monica. Thank you. Natsuki, is 10 okay for you? Yeah, that works. Same here. Then it's settled. We meet at 10 in the morning at Menji's house. Now let's get back to work. Monica, sorry, Natsuki, sit back at the table and begin stapling again. You begins packing. I'll walk you out, Yuri. Thank you, Averse. I followed Yuri to the door. Yuri, thank you all for your help tonight. I'm grateful, and I know Monica is too. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't mention it. It was my pleasure. See you tomorrow, then. She smiles and nods. Of course. Oh, and also, um... Yeah? Thank you for earlier. Earlier? Coming up with an excuse? <laughs> yes, that. You're very welcome. I assume the real reason is something you want to keep a secret. Uh, yes. S sorry about that. It's fine. I won't ask you to explain it. Technically, we just just meet, after all. Y yes. Yes, we did. Thank you for being so understanding. You're welcome. See you tomorrow, then. Yes. See you then. Near your heads out and watch her go for a bit. She looks so... alone right now. I'm reminded immediately of her ghost in the light poem as she walks into the streetlights. Yuri, I promise I will do to make you happy as well. I turn her back in the living room. There are three remaining girls still safe like the remaining flyers together. Did Yuri get off all right? Yeah, she's safe on her way home. Okay, good. Hey, I'm going to clean up the kitchen and I'll come back and help. All right, sounds good. We can clean up the kitchen, washing dishes and rinsing them off and putting them away. What do you think that may be bothering Sayori? I'm not exactly sure. I keep to my head so the girls don't overhear. The more time passes, the less I know what will happen. Guess. I've had to guess it's probably jealousy. What do you mean exactly? Remember when I said to Monica when we first met in the space classroom? Oh. Exactly. I'm in your body and Monica isn't exactly doing the best job of hiding her feelings from me in public. I should talk to her about that. Don't forget the other girls. What do you mean? I'm not sure if it's just me, but they're growing attached to you. I've noticed that too. It's like the game wants me to appeal to all of them. I decided to put away another on one of the pots. What if I heard Yuri and Natsuki say some recently serial dialogue from their routes? If the two of us ever split, you win a four-way love square. That's not funny. I know it isn't. I've watched enough hair man and I know what their fantasy is better than reality. Manji knows my sudden anger. Calm down or it happened again. Manji and I both take a few seconds to calm down. Sorry. I almost lost my head. Not sure why I was so mad. It's because of me. I said something stupid. I'm sorry. It's fine. You didn't say anything wrong. Menji stops talking, leaving me to finish the dishes in silence. Finally, I finish and head back out of the living room. I am ahead of the MC. I head to the living room to see the other girls organizing the flyers. Monica gives me a thumbs up. It's pretty cool to see we're coming more outgoing and relaxed than everyone else. Guess what? We're all done. Already? Nice! <laughs> you expected something less from three awesome pros? That's not what I'm applying. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm tired. And we didn't do much today. Are you going to be okay to walk home in this storm, Natsuki? Oh, I'll be fine. I think it's no good time to call it a night. Thank you all for helping. It means a lot. You're welcome. 
Sure thing. You bet, Madame President. I'm out, y'all. Peace. Sorry, thank your mom for allowing us to use our kitchen. Everest and Menji, thank you for helping out for dinner. See y'all tomorrow. Natsuki grabs her bag and umbrella and puts her shoes on and heads out. The moment Natsuki closes the my mind slowly vanishes. My smile slowly vanishes. I face sorry who flinches a bit of my sudden serious expression. Monica looks at me worriedly. Monica, I'm sorry, could you head home before me? I like to talk to Sari alone. She almost protests but stops herself. She nods and puts a hand on my shoulder and walks past me. Do what you can. Please. I feel Monica's in trouble as she releases me. She holds her belongings and heads out. When she's going to try to soften my expression. Come on, let's sit for a bit. I head to the couch as we sit down. The only sound I can hear is the rain outside. Man, how did I even begin here? I can take a few moments to collect my thoughts. Finally, I take a deep breath. Sorry, I'm going to come out right now and say it. Something's bothering you. Don't deny it. How could you tell? It wasn't me. It was Menji. I might have been distant lately, but I still know you well enough to know something's been bothering you. And something's on your mind right now. I repeat this to Sayori. I see. I take her cheeks in my hand and turn to f turn her face to me slowly. Come on, Sayori. We're here to help you. She does her best to avoid eye contact with me, but I keep looking at her with concern. Heh. <laughs> Averse, you're a bad influence on Menji. He was never this stubborn. You're right, but this is something I need to be stubborn about. Something we need to be stubborn about. Your happiness is important to me, and more importantly, to Menji. Please don't. The look she gives me shatters my heart and Menji's as well. I pull her into the tightest hug I dare. She just sits there, not making a move as I hold her in my arms as comfortably as I could. Half a minute later, she finally moves weakly, weakly reaching to wrap her own arms around me, crying. Menji, averse. I'm, I'm not. She tries to get out of the hug, but I had told her close. Then she dissolves into soft sobs and buries her face in my uniform, weeping loudly. I feel Menji's desire to hold the woman he loves close, and I reply to his feelings by doing just that. I wait until she's finished. When she lets me go, she's hiccuping. I let her go grab a glass of water and a few dishes to her head, and then head back out. She gratefully takes them, dabbing her eyes and sipping at the water. Come on, sorry, we're all friends here. Menji and I really want to help. I can't. I can't, can't tell you. You only worry. We're already worrying. Please tell us. I let Sari gather her thoughts. Finally, she slowly looks back at me. Everest, can you give me an honest answer to the question I'm about to ask? Oh, damn. Does she suspect something about us? If so, it was only a matter of time. I'm surprised our only flimsy lie lasted this long. So what are you going to do? I close my eyes and think. I can almost see the choices box in my head. Tell the truth or lie. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I can't do it anymore, especially not to Sayori. I open my eyes again. Yes. I will. Sayori takes a deep breath. Averse, are you in love with Monica? Sayori? I sit there looking at her in complete shock and I should have expected this from her. Sayori's a bright girl when it comes to things like this. I should have seen this confrontation coming and prevented it. This is my problem and my mistake. I start thinking hard. I think about my feelings for Monica really are. Let's face it, Monica is quite a beautiful woman and easily 10 out of 10. Her outward, outward personality is amazing too. She's kind of thoughtful about her clubmates when she isn't going batshit crazy. Of course, she's not perfect by any means. She's easily jealous and has apparent social, sociopathic tendencies. The more I think about it, the more I really I can overlook these flaws of hers. I just place my trust in her after all, weakness and all. And then I try to imagine what a hypothetical, hypothetical life of Monica would be like. And say I could see a clear future for us. A loving family with kids, former members of the Glitcher Club coming to visit and have fun, clean and bright future. My face becomes hot and take a deep breath, I like back at Sayori. Sorry, I don't exactly know myself. I did just meet her. But I haven't time to think about that seriously before now. Averse. Well, he sounds so serious. What is it? I think it's the time to tell Sayori the truth about how I feel about her. My heart increases again. It feels like I'm about to have a heart attack. I take a few deep breaths. Sayori. Uh, yes. You're in love with Menji, are you? That's why you're asking me if I love Monica. I... How could you tell? It's pretty obvious from an outsider's perspective. I've seen the way you look at Menji before you even knew about me. 
I admit it, you're smitten. Please answer my question first. I already have. I don't know yet. But if you're part of Menji, that doesn't mean a part of Menji loves Monica. I feel a chill round on my spine. She might not guess the truth, but some reason stupid either. It really came back to bite me in the ass after all. God, what do I do when I do? What excuse should I come up with when I maintain this lie until the festival? As I'm thinking, a new thought strikes me. Something in my mind snaps, clearly realization flowing over me like a thousand waterfalls. I stand grabs Harry's wrist. A verse. What's wrong? Come with me, there's something I need to show you right now. Where? Where are you taking me? A place where you can see Menji again. What do you mean? I'm going to tell- No. I'm going to show you the whole truth. Reverse? What are you doing? You'll see. Can I really do this? Can I really shatter Isari's preconceived notions of the world? Yes. I can, because I must. There's no other choice now. I begin to pull Isari towards the front door. Reverse, what is going on? Where are we going? I told you, we're going to show you the entire truth. Wait, wait a minute, you're not going to show Isari. Do you see not any other choices for us? Benji goes silent, I can't feel anything trying to resist. He's either a deep thought or he's already agreed with me. I grab my shoes and get put them on. I have to let Sayuri go, but my relief is not she moving away. I grab my shoes and hold them out to her. Are you coming with me? Reverse, what's come over you? What are you going to show me? I stand and face her, walking over, put my hand on her shoulder. Please come with me. It's important and I'll answer your question. I don't know. Tell her I wanted her to come too. I know what you're planning. I don't like the idea, but I trust your judgment. I wish I could trust my own. Manji wants you to come too. Sorry, man, still. Her face goes through a different expression as she thinks hard. I just think it's a worry she might be thinking in circles. Finally, she turns to me. Alright, hand me my shoes. Well, that's not a request. It sounds like an order. I comply, handing them over quickly. She says, puts them on and grabs an umbrella. Let's go. We head into the rainy night. The rain is falling even heavier now. Walking signs towards Menji's house. So averse. How are you gonna do this? Menji sounds pretty concerned. I'm not sure exactly. I'm kind of playing this ear by ear here. You think Monica's just gonna agree with this? I sigh softly. Probably not. I doubt she'll agree with you on this. You made your point. I start getting a bit more annoyed. Menji notices and I hear him gulp nervously. Right. Sorry. Damn, I let my temper get the better of me again. No, you're fine. We finally reach Menji's house. Taking a deep breath, I lead Sarah inside. I head into the living room, fall close by Sayori. I see Monica lounging on the couch, reading a magazine. She looks up as soon as I walk in. Hey, Averse, is everything? She freezes when she sees Sayori behind me. Averse? Monica, I need the keys. Averse, I'm not sure if. Please. I'll explain later. Monica leads in, searching in my eyes. This reminds me of that recent YouTube DDLC series where the player makes a decision and Monica agrees and disagrees other than the first video. Am I making the same mistake here? Monica will remember that. Pop it up in the left corner. It will do that. Yeah, I should probably explain my reasons to Monica. Sorry, give me Monica a few minutes, okay? Okay. Monica, sorry, sits on the couch. I leave Monica to the spare bedroom. Once we're inside, turn to Monica. I have a good feeling what you're going to say. Please say it. Are you insane? Sorry, sorry, the truth won't help her in the long run at all. Remember what happened at the end of the game when she saw? She went even crazier than other me did. Only because she had presidential powers. Monica doesn't have any of it. She shakes her head. She'll still break. We can't tell her of hers. She sounds like terrified and angry. I let her calm down a bit. She's holding my arms tightly. Why? Why do you want to show her? About that. I explained Monica's conversation Sorry, and I had after she left. Monica listens intently. When I finish, she nods slowly, and some more understanding than before. Now it makes more sense. I don't know if she's a good idea, though. I understand, but I really do, but a sense will alleviate some sort of our worries. And create new ones. Yeah, but we can't keep lying to her. Besides, it might save her for Act 1 fate, and it wouldn't have to her to have third set of eyes. She's smarter than she looks, remember? She just spends a lot of her mental capacity dealing negative feelings. Monica reach over and wraps her arms around me, burying her face in my chest. I reach up and run my hand through her hair gently. After a minute or so, she releases me and pulls out her pen. Before you show Sarah your room, I'd like to show you something about the room first. Okay, lead on. We go down the hall and she locks the basement door with the key. It glitches a bit before I open up the classroom. I look inside. Monica! Whoa. 
Monica, when do you have the time for all this? Hehe, <laughs> you can learn surprising amount online. I spend study hall in here a lot. I didn't want to be gloomy like I was before. Now then, go grab Sari. I'm ready for her to see this. Okay, be right back. And oh, Monica. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm back in the living room. Sorry, still sitting down and looking out at the rainy landscape. Oh dear, there's a distant look in her eyes again. Sorry. Yes. I held up my hand to her. Come with me. Taking her hand, I help her up, and we both head to the room. Before we reach the door, I stop her. Sorry, I like to shut your eyes for a bit. Eh? How come? Trust me, please. I want to show you things in a particular order. Okay. I the door where Monica takes her hand and gently leads her in the space classroom. She then turns Sari to face the door. Sorry, don't move or open your eyes yet. Guys, you're scaring me. It all makes sense in the end, I promise. Now then, turn your head to face the sound of my voice when I open your eyes. Don't look away. Understood. Sorry, does and does what I say. Her eyes open, and they don't stop. Oh, dear. Monica gently holds her head in place and whispers something to her. So she focuses on me again. She's ready, Averse. I'm not ready for that pain again. Same, but here we go. Let's step through it. Ow. I'm never gonna get used to that. I hold back my screams of pain, but this time it feels like less painful than it is the previous two times. I hear Sari shout something in horror as Monica tries to restrain her. I'm both surprised and grateful this time I don't black out from the pain. Minji and I collapse very near to each other and roll away to give each other space. I eventually open my eyes. I smile weakly at Monica. She takes my hand and clasps it in hers tightly. Are you alright? I'll be fine. It wasn't as painful as the other two times. Monica helps me to a sitting position. I'm still in a great deal of pain, but it isn't as bad as before. Uh, to my right, I hear Sari trying hard not to cry as a weakened Manji attempts to reassure that he's okay. What happened? So he points at me. And who's that? Sayori. We'll explain in a bit. Just give us time to recover. Whenever we walk through this door, it hurts. I get some water for everybody. Monica leaves after making sure I'm comfortable. I was just like clings to Menji, crying as Menji tries to calm her down. You alright, Averse? Getting there. Wait, Averse? But Averse wasn't another personality. I'll explain later, I promise. Hopefully you forgive me for what I'm about to tell you. Monica returns with a tray with four glasses on them. I try to reach over, but I'm too weak. No, let me. Place the trays on the table and the one she grabs one and comes rushing over to me, holding a glass of cold water in my lips. Drink. Knowing better not to argue, I oblige opening my parched lips. Let the cool, refreshing water flow down my throat. I'm so glad you're alright. She reciprocally kisses my cheek and snacks to me and then leans her head against my shoulder. I was so worried. I was scared too, but it had to be done. I move my arm for a bit. Nothing seems to be hurting anymore. I try to stand. Monica quickly sits up and helps me to my feet as I fly it off the wave of dizziness. Beside me, Manji tries to stand as well. Sorry it helps him. Okay, I imagine you have a lot of questions. Damn right I do! Well, color be surprised. Monica the nervous one, and Sayori the more forward one. Wow, Sayori, I never heard you an I never heard you swear before. Wait, what'd she, what'd she swear? Damn, okay, damn. Uh, well, um... It's an appropriate reaction. Well, yeah, I suppose so. Well, anyway, there's not much time to play the game again, so we're gonna have to do this old-fashioned way. Game? What game? I point over to the couch. Sit down. This could be a very long talk. Wait over, Monica bringing over the water glasses. Sorry, and I'm sorry, I made you sit on the small couch. Monica, I grabbed a couple chairs and sit up opposite to them. Minji, Monica, and I all share a look of before I take a deep breath. So here's the story. Goodness me. Long talk. Monica and I explained the plot of Doki Doki Literature Club to her. Rather, I explain a lot of it, Monica jumping in here and there. And if you want to play the game again, you need to delete the first run file or reinstall the game. I inflict my explanation, a very shocked and disbelieving Sayori. She's clinging to Menji with a comforting arm around her. 
And that's it. That's the story of Doki Doki Literature Club. Sari's speechless. The three of us give all the time she needs. She's pretty clear that Sari is extremely torn and confused with all the new information. Do an explanation of Act 1. Sari asked plenty of questions, but the three of us did to answer. Now she's silent. The realization of her own suicide act one caused her to go quiet with her few questions during explanations act two and through four. Never saw a glance at Monica with a new expression. Distrust. Well, I can't blame her for that. Makes sense when you find out that your friend is capable of such behavior. Monica Averse, do you mind if I mind if Sayuri and I talk alone for a bit? Of course. Monica is standing ahead of the opposite wall. The computer is there along with another small couch. Take a seat. Well, more or less about to collapse on it, exhausted. We sit there, my mind wanders and travels back to Sari's initial question what started this. Do I like Monica or not? She's definitely a friend, a good one. We've gotten pretty close this past week, it's probably fast too. Not sure why, but it feels just right. What well, even more right and more rather the comforting. The sudden weight against my right shoulder as Monica leans in against me. I look down at her and smile a bit. She looks like she's fast asleep. Guess you're more wiped out than I thought. Mm-hmm. You really left me exhausted. You better take responsibility, okay, for this, you know. <laughs> you're such a naughty girl. I poke her forehead gently. Giggling, she leans in closer. Singly, I put my right arm around her. She snuggles close. I'm a teenager, after all. Don't be surprised. I feel my cheeks get hot again with this, but then Monica's tone shifts. Are you sure this was a good idea? Telling Sari all about all this? I mean... I look down on my lap, frowning. I'll be honest. I'm not! <laughs> Looking over, I see Sari clinging to Menji, who's doing the best to comfort her. But she's in good hands over there. Menji might even just tell Sari how he feels about her tonight. You saw what happened last time that happened. What if she tries to hang herself again? We would shatter her perception of reality, you know that, right? Monica, this isn't reality, it's the same as the game. How do you know? Remember, I'm from reality. I've also played this before. I saw you all as sprites on the screen. Now I'm seeing you as flesh and a blood person. I take her hand, put two fingers on my wrist. What do you feel? Our heartbeat? Exactly. Now here. I take her hand, put two fingers to her wrist for a second. You have a heartbeat too. It's going pretty fast. Of course it is. I'm snuggling with you, aren't I? Exactly. You're acting like a normal human. And that's something else. Remember the hair colors of the other girls in the game you played? And the eye colors too? They're different than they're right now. They are. Sari's kind of pink. Natsuki's, f Natsuki's was full pink and Yuri's is deep purple. But here, Sari's pretty brown. Natsuki's a blonde and Yuri's got black hair. It's like this world's some kind of alternate reality where the game and reality are smashed together in the weirdest ways. And there's other people I've seen too. Kozu, Mori, Ye, Menji's parents, Sari's mom. This world is populated, Monica. Heavily. Oh, I'm rambling again. I take a small breath to collect myself. <sighs> Sorry, I let myself go on a bit. No, it's all right. Remain silent for a few seconds as Monica digests my argument. So, if this isn't a game, it isn't reality. What is it? I wish I knew. Regardless of events, are playing out very similarly to the game. I look over at Monica. Men I look over at Sari and Menji. Except for that, <laughs> Monica follows my eyes. Well, who'd have thought they'd be kissing this soon? Well, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. I begin clapping. <laughs> Monica follows my lead, eager to tease the new couple as much as me. I stand in, I stand in after Alan Monica, their feet walk over. So you finally grew some balls without my help for once. That wasn't help, but you know it, Mr. Hotshot. Yeah, yeah. I ruffle his hair with a wide grin on my face. Get off me. Chuckly, let him go, then I look over Sayori. She and Monica seem to be having a spirited conversation about something. Turn back to Menji with a more serious expression. How's she taking this? About as well as I did when you first told me about the first day. I think that view did a lot to convince her, though. Her points to the view of the earth outside. She did say a lot of similar things after I confessed to her, though. Similar to that confession scene in the game, anyway. But it might just be me, over a choice of words is a bit more hopeful. So here's hoping that's a good sign. No kidding. <laughs> then she then sorry and Monica join us. So, um, what now? Should we tell the other two? Not sure that'd be a good idea. I can only guess how they handle it. You're my ticket well enough, but Natsuki. I showed the hypothetical idea of mental, mental breakdown Matsuki might have of this revelation. 
Yeah, I don't know what her reaction would be. I didn't think it'd be that bad. Although, seeing what's out there might make her nervous. I bet Yuri would be hypnotized by the scene. Now that some kind of tension leaves us always all chuckle. But seriously, do you think we should tell them? I lean against the wall in the center bookshelf and look out the window. I haven't the faintest idea of telling them it's a good idea, to be honest. You're probably joking, Monica, but I think Yuri would probably take this truth a lot better than Natsuki would. Besides, it took a major risk telling you, Sayori. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. It was my idea. Menji and I couldn't bear to see you so hurt. Monica comes up and hugs Sayori. For my part, I think that, looking back on it, we made the right decision to tell you. I wasn't really on board, but I think this will help save you. I certainly hope so. I certainly remember when Monica had, I had agreed to back at Sayori's house, I look at her. Monica, I do believe you and I had an agreement. Thankfully, it seems if she remembers. Of course, I've been thinking about that, actually. What agreement? The only way Everest can be separated safely is in this room. If either tries to leave, we become one person again. What were you thinking, Monica? Well, I admit that I'm stumped. She turns to the computer. I've been only doing coding for a few days, but all that's happened, I haven't been able to practice as much, presumably, as the game itself had. So you know less than DDLC, Monica. She nods sadly. <laughs> Then let's put our hands to work. Huh? <laughs> Sayori. You should start working. I want to help. Well, she just got a whole bunch of new respect from me. Alright, then. I'm going to grab a versus laptop, then we can all get to work. Monica heads out, then as soon as she does, Sayori turns to me. You know you still didn't answer my question. What question? Please not that one. Please not that one. Please not that one. Please not that one. Do you love Monica? Dear God, would I have such bad luck? Yeah, Evers, why don't you tell us? Do you or do you not love Monica? Guys? Hmm? Come on, out with it, tough guy. Yep, they're perfect for each other, even if their teasing is in sync. I sigh heavily. I honestly couldn't give you a straight answer. Monica, she's the most amazing woman I've ever met. She's driven, talented, and quite handy with a keyboard, among other things. She's definitely beautiful, no doubt about that. Completely out of my league. Oh, don't say that, Menji. You should be lucky to have you. But I don't want her. I want you. You're the only woman for me. She, sorry, takes Menji's hand and turns to me. At first, for the record, I think you are in love with Monica. Really? How do you think so? He, well, I've been watching you this past week. And now that I think I know the truth, I think you really are in love with Monica with her. Whatever the fuck I just said. And when after I saw Ara, you and Center next to each other, I'm convinced. I know she loves you, but I think you do too. I know Sarah's no more observant than other people out in the game, but for her to be this observant, I must have worried her more than I thought. Damn, I didn't hide my feeling with Monica as well as I should have. But still, this is sorry. She's a smart girl. She sees something that I'm too stupid to see. I mean, the only relationship I've ever seen mom is mom and dad's. Seriously, I'm even worthy of Monica. Averse. There's more of that motherly tone of hers again. I bet you wonder if you can be worthy of Monica, right? Is she a mind reader? Believe me, I'm still struggling with the fact that I might not be worthy of Menchi. But the fact that she loves me despite all my sticks means she's more worthy than she thinks. She puts an arm around Sayori. Okay, this may be a sickening sweet to me, but I'm a sucker for sickening sweet stuff like this. Yes, I am too. <laughs> I'm so happy for you too. Thank you. He, thanks. You two have given me a lot to think about. Thank you. Monica comes back to the room just then. Here's your laptop. Thanks. I sit on the couch and Minji's next to me. Mona, sorry, Monica, head to the desktop. You guys ready? Not ready. Then let's begin. And we got we get no progress done because we fucking suck at coding. Cause CC, cause fucking computer engineering is a fucking chore. Fucking computer science fucking hurts as well. Cause coding sucks ass. Ugh. I know some tech dweebs yell at me in the comments, be like, "Hey, this shit's easy," and be like, "You, yeah, fuck me, whatever. It's terrible." Hours pass, and with little progress we made is pitiful to say the least. It's not like we're coding experts. We really can't figure anything out from online Python or NP tutorials. Yeah, dude, you have to learn in person. It's not easy to learn coding online. In my eyes, honestly, the only things you can learn online is like English and history. Like science and math, you have to learn that shit in person from a teacher. Because in my honest eyes, that is bullshit. Okay, sorry. We aren't even sure where to start. 
We try a few things like alternating who leaves the room first, me or Menji. That doesn't do anything except tell us what pain lessons or he's crossing the threshold. Well, Menji and I refuse. Monica tries opening her character files, but even tells us the code's pretty much gibberish. We even contemplate creating a new file that executes a separation progress of some sort, but we can even come to an agreement whenever they even begin. How will we discover something useful? I'm not sure how, but Monica's a permanently permanent Sayuri's depression to a more diminished state. Monica even to get rid of it, but says no. Guess what she wants her current depression on her own terms. She asks Monica to put her back on the normally is for her. Monica locks Sayuri's character file, then it is a move to presumably try her and back Sayuri's trust and let Sayuri choose a password for her file. I have to put the password and confirm it. she whispers the password to Menji. Monica tells us with the hope of she keeps the game from able to influence her depression. Finally, Menji looks at his phone. Crap! It's getting ready. We should be getting ready for tomorrow. Whoa, you're right. She heads to the door and steps through, followed by Monica. Menji and I look at each other, sigh, and head through. Love that part. Breaks my ears. Ugh. I place my hand on the wall. Monica closes and locks the door, causing the door to glitch and sputter a bit before we come to the regular door. So he walks over and rubs my back gently as begin my bearings and remerging with Menji. At first, Menji, you two alright? I am. Menji? Same here. He's fine. He didn't hurt him much this time. Well, that's good. I'm glad you both are alright. Thanks, you two. Sorry, do you want me to walk you home? Yeah. Oh, no, it's fine. Why don't I walk you home? No, really, it's fine. At least let me walk you to the door. He <laughs> Okay, Evers. Monica and I both walk over to the door. Well, today's been, uh... Yeah, it's been, yeah. <laughs> There's a palpable silence for us between the four of us. No one knows what to say or do next. Finally, after it seems like a few minutes, Monica speaks up. Sorry, again. I'm sorry about everything. It's okay, Monica. I feel a lot better than I have this past week. How can you be so forgiving? Sorry, I did so many awful things in game. I'm a monster. Even in your dream, you pictured me as Satan. Because I am. I've... So he heads over and hugs Monica close. Shh. I don't see you like that. And you know it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. She motions over to me, and I walk over and put a gentle hand on Monica's shoulder. Thank you. That means a lot to us. He <laughs> thanks. Well, it's time for to go. I'll see you all tomorrow. Yeah, see you then. See you later. See you tomorrow too, sorry. Love you. So I love I like, I repeat this to sorry. Love you too, Menji. With all that, I see a blushing bun, grabs her umbrella, puts on her shoes, and heads out. Monica both head into the living room. Reverse. Hmm? Mind if I crash? I'm beat. Go for it. Thanks. And he's out. Damn, I gotta learn a secret. How the hell does he fall asleep so fast? He's asleep? Oh yeah, he is. Perfect, Averse. Can I talk to you? Sure, that's fine with me. Averse takes my arm- Wow. Monica takes my arm and I leads me to the couch. She pulls me down next to her and looks at me seriously. Looks like something's weighing on her mind for a bit. Averse, I overheard your conversation with Sayo Menji Sayori earlier. I see. I can't think of anything else to say of all the honesty there is anything to say. Monica leans closer to me. Do you really think? Do you really think that you're not good enough? Monica sounds hurt. Damn, now I feel guilty. Monica, I... If anything, I'm not good enough for you. I'm prone to insane jealousy. Shouldn't that be a red flag? I reach over and put her arm around her shoulder. Normally, yes, but I know you're better than that. I know what you're trying to work through that. She works down on her lap. I am, but this isn't easy. Mine keeps telling me I don't deserve you, but I still... She she pounces onto me, we both tumble back. Me landing on my back, she landing on top of me. I still want you. Her voice is soft and sincere. Okay, that's a... I've been really try. I can't, this is bad. Don't talk about that. I can't stop loving you, no matter what stupid things you do. No one might be flustered at this position with such a beautiful woman, but something tells me she isn't going to try anything. I try to choose my words carefully. I reach up with a comforting hand through her hair. I care about you too. I don't want to see you hurting like this. It makes me feel like, well, it makes me want to protect you. Monica Giggles sits back up and straddling my lap. Protect me, huh? Is that a problem? I know, I'm just never picking myself as a damsel in distress type. Never said you were. I sit up. 
You're plenty strong, and I'm sure you have some form of fighting experience. I've taken a few of martial arts classes. I'm sure I could beat your ass in a fight. No doubt in my mind. Aw, uh, you're no fun. You're supposed to say that's a lie and that you can take me down. We both look at each other for a bit. We both break out in a bit of a loud laugh. Just then we hear the front door opening. We're home. Oh, crap! Monkai looked down at herself as they in a very compromising position. We both quickly scramble off each other as Minji's parents both come in. Hey, you... <clears throat> oh, here's the Ara voice that's gonna kill me again. Hey, you two. Why are you both still... Why are you both still up... Ah, fuck me! Hey, you two. Why are you both still up? Oh, sorry, Mom. We were talking about what just happened today. What happened? What happened? Today was pretty busy. The club went over to Sari's place to, to work on the festival. Oh, that reminds me. Next couple of days is going to be... Uh, next couple of days, the club is going to meet to work some things. Is it okay if they meet here? Four girls a hello house alone with you. Menji. Menico, don't worry about it. We'll be home tomorrow at least, remember? Yeah, I know. Wait, I thought you'd be out tomorrow visiting Aiko. No, we're gonna... No, we're gonna do that on Sunday. Oh, okay. Still, though, I don't know if I like the idea of being alone with the girls on Sunday. Maybe I should ask Sayako to watch you guys. Sweetie, no need for her to come over. Menji's not a kid anymore. Chitsu-san, I swear nothing like that will happen. All we're gonna do is be doing bacon cupcakes that day, and that's it. Good, if anyone can now watch you over, it's her. And Monica snickers a bit. Mom, I'm not a kid anymore. He really isn't, dear. That being said, don't do anything towards them, okay? I would never do anything like that. I know you wouldn't. Now your mom and I are going to bed. It's been a long day, and judging from how tired you two look, I imagine you're both exhausted too. By the way, when are these club members come by tomorrow? Around 10? Good, I look... Good, I look forward to meeting them all. Oh dear, that can't be good. Minji's parents head upstairs. That went a lot better than I expected. No shit. But she's right, we should head to bed. Today's been exhausting, to say the least. Well then, good night, Verse. I love you. With that, she goes to her temporary making no effort to hide away her hips. This, oh, hide the sway of her hips, she disappears up the stairs. Damn, that woman's foxy as hell. Head upstairs. Ugh, it's been such a long day. I get out of the uniform and drape over the desk chair. And after changing some pajamas, I collapse into bed. Sleep. <laughs> oh, finally, a break. Oh, Jesus, that went on for so long. Oh, God. Alright, everybody. I'm going to end that episode there because I'm freaking tired. <laughs> Take care of yourself, everybody. See you next episode on The World of Dreams. Thank you.